Hey, welcome to the second part of my studio tour. And I realized that my first part was way too long. So I'll try to be a bit shorter this time. So here we are at the center of attention, which is my main station. Here I have my computer for my uh, DAW stuff. Um, I mainly use Ableton or Logic. And right there below is everything that I use to edit and uh, fine tune individual sounds or the master bus of my recordings. And the way that it works is I have this ADI2 Pro FSR, which is my stereo AD and DA converter. And that is going into the SPL Hermes. And the SPL Hermes is a mastering grade insert or so-called mastering router. And what that means is that I have eight uh, or up to eight different stereo units that I can hook up to the SPL and then I can insert them into my signal chain and I can rearrange them whenever I like. So that is how I can be um, as quick as possible. So I have my HDE, I have my Empressa, I have my Thermionic, Culture, Phoenix, Valve Compressor, they are all connected to the Hermes and I can send out stuff and then uh, I can start to edit and uh, to fine tune some settings and this is great. This is not only great for the mastering chain uh, because that's what it int is intended to do. But it's also great for sample creation or sound design because if I have a kick drum that is weak, I can just send it out to my SPL and then I can start working on this beautiful stuff. So let's go through that. Um, on the top, I have the Universal Audio 6176, which is a Valve um, preamp with an 1176 compressor. A great unit. Use it uh, mainly for drums. Uh, the 1176 I use for drums. Um, sometimes I use the preamp for vocals or for synths. I especially love the 6176 on my Nord Modular that sits uh, below here and that is just great for giving some warmth to and uh, to digital synth. So that's where I, what I use it for. It is mono, but um, some sounds, they don't need to be stereo, especially some chords or some uh, patio sounds, bass sounds. They are lovely through that. 6176. Um, I think I will change the tube in there and then we will do an A-B comparison uh, what well, the uh, 6176 sounds with uh, the old tube and with the new tube, so you get an idea of uh, what that can bring to the table. Underneath there is the Phoenix Culture, um, uh, oh, sorry, the Phoenix from Thermionic Culture, and that is something that I got yesterday. It is quite new. It's a valve compressor, it has a very new design. And Guido Abge from Abge Tontechnik gave it, uh, gave it to me for a, for a review and I still have to get my head around it. It's very pristine sounding, really warm and precise. I, don't, I, I can't speak too, too much about it. I will have to do some uh, thorough uh, investigations. Right there below is the Elysia M-Presser, which is a fat compressor. Very groovy compressor um, with the anti-lock feature. Um, I will do a secondary review or a, a, yeah, I will do some some demoing and testing for you guys with the Alusia Impressor. Um, just it's it's very good for creative compression because it's so flexible that you can do a lot of stuff with it. It's great on the master bus. It's, it's, it's great on everything. It's a fat design. It has a bit more aggressive, aggressiveness to it in, com, in contrast to the other Elysia compressors. 
but I love it. Um, on top of that is my Octomic XTC. I use that for my uh, yeah for my voiceovers and to my vocal recordings. Um, and apart from that, because RME is RME, it's also the um, format converter from Toslink to AES. Uh, no, sorry, it's the com uh, I use it for. Um, my secondary input, digital input of the ADI2 Pro FSR as well. So Toslink is going out here from MADI from my computer to here. So I have two different sources from my headphones that I can control here with the ARC USB from RME as well. Um, maybe I'll do a video about that, about that, what that, what that brings. But essentially is I have a, a headphone output that I can control with the Arc USB independent from the main out, which is the mastering chain. Uh, yeah, that's, that's it, essentially. Here will uh, be a very interesting uh, unit. Um, Stefan, who also does the HDE 250A, uh, uh, is servicing my Siemens uh, EQ. That will come here uh, later this year. And down below here is the HDE 250A uh, high definition equalizer from Custom Audio Germany. And Stefan, who is the owner of Custom Audio Germany and also the guy that uh, builds all the units by hand, um, is a crazy guy because he thought about um, doing a Sontech um, style EQ. And the Sontec is uh, a design from George Massenburg. It is well known since the 70s. It, it is just one of the equalizers that many people want to have because it sounds so warm and it's great for mastering. Um, and the HDE is of that heritage, but Stefan did his own thing with it. So you can really customize that one. And my... <laughs> My HDE is pretty much maxed out. Um, not only do I have uh, some transformers in there, so I have a Carnhill and a Lundahl, uh, Lundahl uh, transformer, which I can insert independently from, for the in and output, which brings another sonic palette to the table. It also has the MS function. So when I engage the MS, it's not longer left and right side. It is mid and side. So then you have your mid section here, which is all the mono signal, and then uh, everything except mono. Great for the master bus, great for individual sounds. You can um, fine tune everything um, from a really good perspective. And I would describe this sound as really grabby and transparent. Um, really enjoy that. It's uh, it, it's just one of the, the those com, uh, EQs that you miss when they are not inserted. So I, I do my A-B testing and I go like, mm -hmm -hmm, and then I just, oh yeah, then now it's in and I, I enjoy that. And it sounds nothing like software. I love software and dynamic EQs are to die for, but honestly, boosting with the HDE 250A is a different story. It is different. I will do an A-B comparison uh, between the HD 250A and some uh, normal uh, uh, plugins that everyone uses nowadays. And there's nothing to say that it's better or worse, it sounds different. And what I don't like is the sentiment that analog is obsolete because essentially you have everything in the box. That is not true. That is not to say that it's better or worse, it's just to say that there is a difference. And if you want the difference, that is totally up to you. Okay, and right beneath there is the SBL Hermes. That's it, uh, really. Apart from that, I use the Arc USB as a monitor controller for my uh, Type 5s, which I use mostly for jamming. Then I have um, some headphones. Um, um, you can see the review up here or here, um, and that's it. And right here is my lovely Space Echo. Mm, again, this is something I use also for the synths, but I also insert it sometimes for uh, sample editing. I mean, everyone knows the Space Echo. Tape delay, 
mm, originally from the 70s. It's just one of these sounds that you instantly fall in love with. Uh, especially with the instrument input um, that you can use that is amazing on guitars, amazing on, on drum sounds. Sometimes I just send out a kick drum through that and it instantly sounds like a record. Okay, so that's the beauty of tape. Tape is tape. Uh, and I've tested out the emulations of the Space Echo and not only are the plugins stereo, because the Space Echo is mono, they don't sound like it. At least not like my unit. And my, okay, my unit needs some servicing. Um, it has some wacky pots here. Um, that is true, but uh, generally I can say that tape sounds different than the plugins. But, you know, it's, these are just tools. Use what you want to use. Uh, down there is the Eventide H9000. Jesus, that thing is amazing. And frustrating at the same time sometimes. Um, this machine is for the future. The sounds are astonishing. I love the reverbs and it's just something, it's, it's lush, it's wide, it's creative. The only downside of this thing is that it has a boot time of around two and a half to three minutes. If Eventide could fix that, it would be amazing. I mean, I can only imagine how it would be as a live performing artist to be on the stage and the thing goes west or no, sorry, goes south and then you have to push it again and then you have to uh, bridge three minutes um, until the Eventide H9000 is back. Um, apart from that, this is an amazing effects unit and if you have that you essentially don't need any, anything else because you have everything in there. Um, and down there is the exact opposite of the Eventide, uh, Eventide H9000. That's the Vesta Casa Digital 411 Digital Delay. Um, nothing, nothing more to say. It's uh, Vesta Casa. Uh, if, uh, Vesta Casa is uh, Vestax, I believe, and it's a 12-bit uh, delay. <laughs> it's dirty. And it's, it's, it's fun. It's great for dub. It's great for uh, deep house. It has just a 12 bit sound on a delay. Uh, what is not to like about that, right? It's, <laughs> it's just dirty. And I bought it from, from one of my friends for eight, 80 quid and uh, best investment of 80 euros so far. Um, it's just fun. It's dirty. Everything is a bit wacky and the pots, uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, the, uh, it's distorting very, very quickly. Um, very dirty sound and it has a hold function. And with the feedback, you can just make it scream. Uh, yeah, so this is more uh, of the sound design stage. This is more uh, for overall uh, fine tuning and mastering. Um, I don't do, do mastering, pre-mastering, sorry, and mixing. So I hope that uh, gives you a good overview of my setup. If you have any questions about the gear or something you would like to see, please uh, leave me a comment down below and I'll be happy to uh, do something for you guys. Um, yeah, see you uh, on part three of this extensive studio tour. <laughs>